Well, greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As we share this last day of 2023, I'd like to read Psalm 111. And in it we see the great are the Lord's words and his works. And in verse 4, Luther said that, it, verse 4 says, the Lord is gracious and merciful. Luther said that should be painted in gold letters around a portrait of the Lord's Supper. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Listen to Psalm 111. It says, praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful or compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the this is an interesting one, giving them the lands of other nations. But you have to read the Old Testament and understand what's going on to have that make sense. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and righteousness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. And then it ends like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Amen. Amen. I would direct your attention to the silent prayer as the prelude is played for us this morning and the lighting of the candles begins. And I pray the Lord richly bless you as you worship him together in this sanctuary. Amen.
Please rise for our invocation and confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. We, we praise, praise our God, God who became Amen. flesh and the child of the Amen. Jesus was in the world, yet the world did not know him. Through him all things were made. His word brings light and hope to those who live in darkness. Joseph and Mary left their home in Nazareth for Bethlehem to register for the Roman census. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel appeared and said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. Mary and Joseph took their son to Jerusalem, to the temple, to present him to the Lord. While there, a man named Simeon was also there. Moved by the Holy Spirit, he held the child Jesus in his arms and prayed to God. My eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory to your people Israel. We rejoice in the salvation of our God. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever would believe in him would have eternal life. Let us approach our gracious Heavenly Father and confess our sins, for He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of, of silence for personal reflection and confession. We confess together, most gracious and patient Father, we are children come before you, knowing your compassion and love. We are genuinely sorry for our sinful thoughts, words, and deeds. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have covered our eyes and left the things undone, and we have acted in ways that are displeasing to you. We have placed our own selfish desires above you in need. Our hearts are saddened by our misdeeds. Send your spirit to renew our heart. Lead us to walk in your path, so that we might be right in your will. To the glory of your name. Amen. God, your heavenly Father, has had compassion on you. He sent his son Jesus to suffer and die, paying the price for your sin. Jesus has wiped away your transgressions and cleansed your heart. As a servant of the word, I announce that God, your Father, forgives you. And by the authority God has invested in me, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Our first lesson for this morning is Isaiah chapter 61, beginning in verse 10. And in this section, the mouth of the Lord announces the coming salvation that will be established in Jerusalem by Jesus and proclaimed to the ends of the earth. And this comes hundreds of years before Jesus. He writes, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as a soil makes a sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Zion's new name, hmm, for Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings 
your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from Galatians chapter 4, beginning in verse 4. And this short passage we're reading today summarizes the reason that Jesus, that, that Jesus was sent into this world. He earned for us the right to call God our Father. And it reads like this. This is Paul writing. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but you're God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel lesson. Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 22 through 40. And Jesus here is presented at the temple in Jerusalem and anointed as Savior. The enduring faith we'll see of Simeon and Anna encourage us as we see the Lord's salvation in our midst. And we look forward to seeing him face to face in eternity. It reads like this. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses... Joseph and Mary took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated for the singing of the message hymn.
Before we're seated, let's share the text that's written in the bulletin. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Please be seated. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as we come to the close of another year and embark on a new year, it's only natural to take a look back at the last 12 months and see what they've entailed. Mm-hmm. And maybe you're thinking, wow, what a year that has been. Maybe you look back at the 12 months and you think about all that you have personally experienced. Additions to your family through births or marriage, maybe new friends, maybe a new job, maybe starting a new school, special events. Maybe there's some hard things too. Loss of a loved one, diagnosis of a disease, surgeries, sicknesses. But when you stop and think about it, you can look back and say, wow, what a year this has been. So I can only imagine what Mary and Joseph may have thought. They may have had a similar conversation. Wow, what a year this has been. Just think, in the prior 12 months, Mary and Joseph were engaged. They were starting to plan their wedding looking forward to beginning their married lives together. Then those plans were abruptly interrupted by an angel who delivered some startling news. Mary will become pregnant by the Holy Spirit, a baby boy, the Son of God, Savior of the world. Mary then spent three months with her relative, Zechariah and Elizabeth, and then she returns home to Nazareth, where she and Joseph began to prepare for the birth of their son. Then came the mandate from the Roman government that forced them to make the 70-mile journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, where Mary gave birth to Jesus. Yes, Mary and Joseph may have looked at one another Maybe a slight smile on their face and thought, wow, what a year 1 B.C. has been for us. <laughs> and it's only just begun. See, the verse right before our gospel reading, though, for today, says, on the eighth day, this is after Jesus is born, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, He was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. See, Joseph named him Jesus, even though the cultural norm would have been to give him a name from the family. Mary and Joseph, they had already demonstrated humble faith in so many different ways. In the time leading up to Jesus' birth, And we continue to see it now. They simply did what God had asked of them in naming their son Jesus. And the next phase in their lives showed further obedience to the law of the Lord as they now travel to the temple in Jerusalem to present Jesus and to make sacrifices. Now, it wasn't a very long trip from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. It's only about five miles. Jesus was over a month old, and we're told that when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, that Joseph and Mary took Jesus to the temple to present him to the Lord. Now, the purpose for Mary and Joseph going to the temple was twofold. First, they went to present him, Jesus, to the Lord. The Lord told his Old Testament people that the firstborn male of every family belonged to him. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. Now that child could either remain in service to the Lord 
helping the priests, or the parents could pay a small amount of money, five shekels, a few dollars, to redeem that child, freeing that child from that obligation. But the second reason that Mary and Joseph went to the temple was to offer a sacrifice as payment for purification. Now, it might seem a bit foreign to us who are so far removed from the Old Testament, but for those who lived before Jesus came, it was a rather regular part of their lives. There were many things that God said made a person unclean. And one of those things was any form of shedding of blood. You see, for a person to be purified from that uncleanness, a sacrifice had to be made. A price had to be paid. And this payment for purification it was a constant, constant reminder of their relationship with God and what was required for it to be repaired. These were pictures that reminded people of their sin, which makes them unclean before a holy God. And in order to be purified from sin, a sacrifice needed to be made. A price had to be paid. The countless, and you read in the Old Testament, the countless sacrifices made by people like Mary and Joseph. Throughout the Old Testament, it pointed people to the need for a perfect, final, and complete sacrifice that the promised Messiah would make as payment for all sins once for all. Now, while you and I are no longer required to observe those sacrificial laws with their pictures of sin's effect on our relationship with God, it doesn't take long to find the messy fingerprints of sin in our own lives as the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 3, this is beginning in verse 10, he says, As it is written, there is no one righteous. Not even one. There is no one who understands. No one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good. Not even one. And then he finishes that section in 23 where he says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's not just them. That's us, right? We need a Savior. So Romans 6.23 reads like this. The wages of sin is death. But, don't you love that word? But, the gift of God, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, here in the gospel reading we shared today, we see Jesus being presented at the temple, anointed Savior, bringing the glory of God back to the temple. But real quickly, I think it's helpful to review the glory of God around that temple and his presence. You see, God led Israel out of Egypt as a pillar of cloud by day and as a pillar of fire by night. God's glory visibly came to dwell over the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle to guide Israel in her journeys. Now, after the priests went with the Ark to the newly built Jerusalem temple, God took up residence there. But Due to rampant sin, ignoring God's laws, the temple was destroyed by foreign armies and the people taken into exile as punishment by God. Well, shortly before the first temple was destroyed, the prophet Ezekiel saw God's glory leaving the temple. And after the exile, the temple was rebuilt, but it lacked the glory of God. And the prophets wrote, that God promised one day to fill the temple with an even greater glory. And that promise comes to fulfillment here in this reading, when the king of glory comes to his temple in the baby Jesus. 
So that's why I think it's really good to see Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem. That's why Simeon sang, and Anna could not keep from telling people about the baby she had seen. It is right there in that temple in Jerusalem that Joseph and Mary, and even Jesus, are doing something very important. For Jesus to be the perfect sacrifice on the cross, there could be no cause of accusation against him. He is beginning to, the process to pay for our sinful mess, for our sinfulness, for our purification from sin, our freedom from sin's accusations. Right there. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, Pastor Fennessy, did I miss something? I thought Jesus did that on the cross. This is just baby Jesus. He's not doing anything. Well, the only reason I think the cross means anything, the only reason the death of Jesus on the cross does anything is because of what Joseph and Mary are doing, their obedience right then and there. And what is that? You see, Jesus, we know, lived a perfect life, a life that is in complete obedience to what God demands what God demands of us that we can't fulfill. Jesus is being presented to the Lord just as the Lord commanded his Old Testament people to do. Jesus' perfect obedience to God's will would continue through his life, as the Bible tells us. And the child Jesus grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus grew up. He learned and lived perfectly in our place. But that's why Jesus' sacrifice at the cross is sufficient payment for our sin. There is not one thing in his life that could dismiss him from being that perfect sacrifice. Nobody can dismiss Jesus even due to his parents. Though they were less than perfect, they faithfully followed the laws of the Lord. And nobody can point to Jesus and say, but you weren't dedicated. You weren't. His parents obediently followed every part of the law. The reason the Bible can say the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin is because of his perfection. Because of his following the Lord perfectly. As the apostle Peter would write much later, It says, for you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver and gold, that you were redeemed, but with the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish or defect. What Mary and Joseph's obedience and the sacrifice of those two turtle doves pointed to, their son Jesus was at the center of it. He really is that perfect gift. Did anybody, did anybody get a gift card for Christmas? I did. And you might have gotten one, especially if you're hard to shop for. Like, I don't know, let's get him a gift card. <laughs> did anybody get a credit card for Christmas? <laughs> no, hopefully not. What's the difference? They look similar, right? You can use them to purchase things. But if you don't know the difference, you find out really quickly. With a credit card, you have to pay for what you buy. With a gift card, someone else has paid for what you buy. You owe nothing. See, through faith in Jesus, God has, in a sense, given you a gift card that is payment for every one of your sins, paid for with Jesus' perfect life and sacrifice on the cross. Because of that gift card of Jesus God can never demand payment from you for your sins. Jesus has fully paid what we once owed. It gives great peace. It can give great peace to know that. That we are right with God because Jesus did everything right in our place. Even as a little baby in Jerusalem. And it's the peace that the Apostle Paul writes about in Colossians chapter 3. See, Paul encouraged his fellow Christians to let the peace of Christ rule 
in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you are called to peace. Well, how does that happen? Well, Paul fortunately continues. He says, let the word of Christ, the message of Christ, dwell richly in you as you teach, as you admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, through hymns, through songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So with all those things in mind, I would encourage you this next year to commit yourselves. Many of you do. Encourage your friends. Encourage your family. Commit yourselves to joining Sunday worship with Christians on a weekly basis. You see, you can teach, admonish one another. You can let the Word of Christ dwell in you. Grow in your knowledge of the Bible through the study of God's Word. Go to a Bible class. Have a personal Bible study plan. Go to Sunday school. Have family devotions. Have an active prayer life. You see, Jesus is the perfect sacrifice, and he's given his life for us. We have great peace knowing that by the word of Christ richly dwelling in you. So on the beginning of this, at the end of this year, and the beginning of this next year, I pray that the gratefulness of this new life in Christ would be multiplied in each one of your hearts as he guides you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Now let's sing together the offertory hymn as we receive our offerings today.
confession of faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ the only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by God, the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and is buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, in the fullness of time, you said, you sent forth your Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us and give us the adoption as your sons and heirs. Hear us, Father, as we call to you in his name. Give us grace to rejoice in Christ's blessed incarnation and grant us a glad new year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lead your church, Lord, to follow the example of Simeon, that all Christians would embrace Jesus by word and faith, and so be ready to depart whenever they are called. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from whom all families on earth is named, continue to bless Christian families with your promises, all families with your promises. <laughs> Give parents diligence and delight in their work and grant your favor on all children that they may grow in strength and wisdom. And Lord, we, we pray for those who are without husbands and wives, orphans, broken families, with your mercy. Give them joy in the redemption that you have won for us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Oh Lord, you've given power to the nations and to those who govern for the good of all people. Bless our president, the Congress, the governor, all of our leaders, that justice would prevail and your people would live freely at peace with all. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, receive our prayers for those who suffer from loneliness. Comfort them with the sure and certain knowledge that you will never forsake them. Give them family and friends within the household of faith with whom they can find loving companionship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the sick. We pray for the suffering, especially for those who desire our prayers. Surround them with your love in Christ and according to your gracious will, heal them. And Lord, comfort those who mourn. We lift up Tasha Larson's family at the loss of her grandfather. I pray that the peace of Christ would rule in that family and give them opportunity to reflect on his life of love for you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And Lord, at the beginning of a new marriage, we pray for Keenan and Melody Pretzer. I pray, Lord, that you would guide them and lead them by your word, and that you would, in due time, multiply their family. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus, for our salvation, praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. It's into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. For thine is the 
kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the closing hymn. <laughs> Amen and amen. Happy New Year. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.